Sparks ready to blow. The kickoff from Taylor Adams, the captain of Kelston Boys, pushing it deep inside the 22. Has the first tackle broken already by Mags. That's their halfback, Pete Cowley. Shows his nice long pass, and he gives his first five. McAllister plenty of time, and that's a big punt. Carving off about 50 metres there, McAllister, and Mags goes straight on to the attack. A pretty good field position for Mount Albert Grammar. Good start. Oh, definitely. And a lot of these um, games is a settling down period, isn't there, Ken, where both teams can be very nervous, and I think that in a lot of cases, a team that settles down the quickest has a big advantage. Sean so Devine in the number seven jersey off the back. Doesn't get a hand on the ball. A thrower for Kelston is Shin Kumazaki, Japanese-born pupil here at Kelston Boys. I tell you what, I was watching him do the haka too, John. He did not a bad job, mate. Must be a bit difficult. So a little bit of a culture shock doing the haka coming from Japan, I'd imagine. Well, he he seems to be totally at home here. New Zealand Secondary School's wrestling representative, so he won't back off from any of the tough stuff up in the front. That's a big front row, all over 100 kg for Kelston and. First free kick of the match. So we've got two teams which will sort each other out for a little while. But you get the sense from what's been said beforehand, Mark, that they're really going to push this hard. They're going to attack when they can. Interesting that Kelston won that hit and then got called for the free kick. Yes, it's very interesting. An important part of the scrum is getting the initial hit. A lot of scrums, when they go down, are unsettled, and that can be a disadvantage to them, but it's about getting that initial hit, and um, that gives you an early advantage. Of course, the referees now have four very clear calls, and there needs to be four reactions to the calls. Pick up off the back by the number eight. That's Matahera. He's a very tall man from number eight. And makes some inroads on the short side. But uh, coughing the ball up, so the next scrum will be fed by the halfback for Calston boys, Leon Fukapuko. Oh, yes, we saw Jordan Manahera playing for Westlake boys last year, didn't we? So he's had a, had a change. I think he's enjoying the new environment here at Mags. Now, well, Calston boys, high national champions. That's impressive, isn't it? Four times national champions. It's been a bit lean in the 2000s, though. Good that was good hit at scrum time then from Mount Albert Grammar so they won all in the hits at scrum engagement well it's such a psychological part of the game isn't it F whoever gets the edge in this area that can carry on to the rucks to the malls the tackling running with the ball so very important part of any game of rugby is a scrum time this is Leon Fuka Fuka the halfback for Kelston he dropped to the open side and Number eight went down the blind, and now Fuka Fuka trying to put Mount Albert inside their own half. Taylor Adams not able to take the ball cleanly, but they'll throw at a line out this time inside the Mount Albert half. Yes, the call is it came off blue, so a really good opportunity here for Kelston boys. And you heard their coach pre game, they've got a good forward pack, so they'll be backing themselves. Well, yeah, you just see the ball going loose there. And it was deemed to be come off blue. I don't know. It looked to me that it came off uh, Taylor Adams. But anyway, the referee is the sole judge of fact. Kumazaki, you know, his target was Manukia jumping at the front of the lineout. They try to get some momentum going forward. Adams straight away for Kirby Tavita. Belton in a two-man tackle, just short of the advantage line. And now Philip Viani, 125 kilograms of him. That's a lot of him, isn't it? That's a lot of him, a lot of hamburgers in there as <laughs> Mount Albert Grammar go forward over the advantage line. Hello, hello, very nice run from the hooker. Now, McAllister Poy, the ball into it, she's strong and bumps off and offloads for Sione Till, the lock forward. Now they're inside the Kelson half with the ball and they win a penalty. 
Yes, and you can see what they can do, ball in hand, some nice continuity. I love the way these young men keep the ball alive. They don't just, they, you know, a lot of teams, the default position, go to the ground, play it on the deck. A lot of these young men try and throw it up off the deck, keep the ball alive before they go to deck, which is great entertaining rugby to watch. Just saw those names going up there, Olo Brown and Matthew Ridge, who played for Mags, and I saw Matthew Ridge interviewed on Rugby Centre during the week, and, and he could only rave about his memories about college rugby and how much it meant to he and Olo and the others involved at that time, and it, it's uh, something that stays with uh, ex-pupils for a long time. Now we come back, McAllister Poi, so Mags on attack. Great cut there from uh, Mohi. Mohi's big and strong, but so too is the defence from Calston. Now the big run from Halaholo, the captain. Inside the 22, turned over and back in the hands of Fuka Fuko, the halfback for Kelston. Uh, we'll play that scrum, and this scrum battle could be fairly intense. If we have a look at that front row for Mags, they're all over 100 kg, and so too is Kelston. As we have a look now, interesting at this tactic nice here from Mount Albert Grammar. As they say, it's what they call centre return footy, where from the set piece they hit the midfield in the centre and then they immediately go back on the recycle back the way they came with the forwards waiting this time hala holo so it was a nice attacking play put together by mount albert well matter but grandma last year very had a very good forward pack and dylan hala holo was a big reason for that charlie McAllister described him as a special player prior to this game you just start to see him getting into his work calista going to need to be wary hala holo of course oh. number eight last year been converted Back to hooker. He, of course, he was forced into playing the back row last year to accommodate Nafatasi Sua, who played for the New Zealand secondary school team. An interesting Hodgman, the tight head prop for Mount Elbert. It was another kid promoted from the bench last year, playing behind more experienced players. And Jared McAllister Poy out here at first 5 8 was a wing and bench player. And been handed the all important number 10 jersey, where he's now filling in where Matt McGahn performed so well last year. Yes, Matt McGann was an impressive player, Kim. Really enjoyed watching him last year. And we've seen some wonderfully talented players. And Mount Albert Grammo starting to apply a bit of pressure now to Kelston Boys Scrum. And there's been a resulting penalty from that. But they absolutely dismantled uh, Kelston Boys in the previous Scrum. We'll have a look at this one. They're just starting to really apply a bit of pressure. Yeah, and you could just see... The tight head prop there for Calston boys coming in on the angle. Philip Viani, you can't do that. You've got to keep straight and hit in straight. You can't hit across on the angle. That is deemed dangerous and can cause some problems at scrum time. Well, that gives Mount Albert Grammar an attacking chance here. Seven metres out. They need to control that line out. But it's not tidy. Fuka Fuko sends it down the touchline, relieving the pressure. And so it's a very untidy first five minutes or so ten minutes of this game as they feel each other out a little bit so we go to this line out uh, Bull, you might have a look at the number eights the size of these these guys yes. Sosathene Tokonkio for uh, Calston boys and this here is Jordan Manahira 18 years of age he's ex Westlake boys he was their captain last year and captain of their rowing squad but they are monster men there they are, John. I wouldn't want to be keep competing with them at mealtime, that's for sure. They're big units. Sean Devine to the 22. Nice drive by the number seven for Mount Albert. Quick ball one, using the short side well, but Kelston stack it there with defence. Halaholo turns. It may come back quickly. It does eventually to Cowley. This Kelston defence looks as though it's very well organised. Five inside the 22. Short side again, no. Bringing out on the open. McAllister Poy gives the call out there. Miss out pass to Devon. Packing centre field with the big boys here. Nice double around by McAllister Poy, which sees a great pass out here. This is Stewart on the left wing. Caught just short, three metres short. Quickly there, Devine and four other forwards. Big chance. Test here for Kelston. The skipper has a go. Unloads nicely. Number six is in. That's Tane Lamb. That's Hullaholo working hard, keeping the defenders at bay and still able to unload to Tane Lamb. 
And at 99 kilograms, his third year in the first 15, Tane Lamb opens the scoring. Well, it's about keeping phases going, and that's what Mount Albert Grammar did so very well. And McAllister Poy at first 5'8". Look at this pass from him here. It is an absolute ripper. Goes about 15 metres out to his winger, Stewart. And then they just continue the momentum here, Mount Albert Grammar. And hello, hello, as we've seen, he loves to get his hands on the ball. He probably could have just about gone all the way himself, but unselfishly pops the ball up to Tane Lamb, who finishes it off. Oh, that is superb play, superb backup, and well finished. Hello, hello, making a big impact already. Ten minutes gone, first try. Mags five points to nil. Had a well taken try. We've established one thing, gentlemen, that the posts are empty. <laughs> they sounded very hollow as that <laughs> ball hit it. I heard that sound actually when someone tapped you on the head before. Is that right? Yeah, mate? yeah, similar sort of sound. Gee, that's that's a little bit unkind of you, John. Well, this is uh, is, is this Vaying? I uh, haven't seen too much of him in action in the game. We'll pick up on who that is. Vainga certainly had no. Vainga's out there. 13. It's, it is Matt Vainga. It is. He's a uh, man coming to the sideline. We didn't see what happened. We might find that later. But there's a charge down. And suddenly, it's Mags under pressure. Yeah, McAllister Poy got his kick charge down. And then he tidied up. So a little bit of realignment as Kelston tried to put pressure immediately. Now, Tukum Gyo. Tall and rangy back row forward with a good carry. Now, Chris Neary is a good player, this open side flanker. He's tremendous in their game against Kings, Adams, Tavita. Now, the Sinia with his left arm available can't get the ball away. Well, we saw Matt, Matt Vaenga. Uh, has been replaced now by uh, Fata, number 22, as we see the injury, how it happened. He got caught under his number eight. I think that's his leg got caught under Togokuya, and that's where he twisted his leg. And this is uh, Kelston Boys mounting some pressure, but the last pass goes astray. And good cover there from McAllister Poy. The Mount Albert first 5-8 just coming across and snapping on the loose ball. So a lost opportunity there from Calston boys, but a good reply after Mount Albert scored on them. Yeah, not such good news for Calston Boys High School. We can confirm that Mutt Bayinga, the centre, is off. It is an ankle injury. But the one player that Mount Albert Grammar are going to keep their real eye on is this fullback, Lolagi of Visi Ina. He was brilliant against um, King's College a couple of weeks ago. And I'll tell you what, these guys have got game breakers right across the park. Yeah, interestingly enough, uh, Matt Vainga's father, the famous Samoan player, Tu'u Vainga, is here watching, supporting uh, his sons who represented Kelston. And uh, this is a man that Mark Watson was talking about, Lolangi Desenia, Auckland under 16 representative a couple of years ago, but he's also in the first 11. He's an athletics representative, a touch representative, a pretty much an all-rounder. As we come back to Shin Kumazaki to start. And I was going to say, John, just adding, we saw a beautiful try against King's College from him. He ran 50 metres, so he knows how to do the business. Five-man line-out from uh, Kelston. It's Vianney with a good carry. And Adams, this is the replacement player, Nadul Tal Talek. And the quick recycle, they hit the right side for... Yeah, they win a ball again now flat for Manukia and they've lost the ball first knock on from Kelston so it'll be a defensive scrum for Mount Albert Yeah, Kelston boys once again applying pressure, but just a, a lack of concentration there by Manukia. He was looking where he was running as opposed to looking at the ball. So 
an unforced error and I'd be a little bit disappointed with that one. Callister Point. In his last attempt at a clearance charge down. So they have a little look down the left hand side for Stewart. Very good run from the left winger. Now just forwards. Divine. Good composure so far from Man Albert McAllister Poy. Good work from Chris Neary catching him a long way behind the advantage line. Very good number seven play. So Cowley gets the ball and 125 kilograms of Vianney at the same time. Says to me, you're going champ. Throws him on the deck. Not, not very pleasant for him, I'm sure. <laughs> McAllister Poy goes long with Timmy Paraki. Uh, this time for the tactical kick as opposed to the run and what a game from the young fullback oh nice touch he had a little bit of time and normally you'd expect him to run but he saw the space in behind and beautifully placed kick and he's put his team in a wonderful position to attack let's have another look at this he's got plenty of time and space he keeps it nice and low almost not quite a grubber that had a little bit of height but very well done from Vicinia. Rutherford's a man who claims the ball at the line out for Mount Albert. Cowley, again that smooth pass and McAllister looks poised. That first five and what a gain once again from this young man, Jared McAllister, 17 years of age, New Zealand under 17 representative. This thing he was a winger last year and played mostly off the bench. That's Pele for Funga Cowley, who was the Blues 18s halfback last year and he's a fair size too McAllister Point we've already seen him in contact a couple of times can hit as well yes he got, he badly, got badly injured against uh, Auckland Grammar last year I think he broke his ankle actually yes he did but when he's, he watches on as his forward pack goes back just a little bit the men in red with Kumazaki at the back trying to be a, a disruptive influence Yeah, a couple of offenders there called for coming in around the side, which you can't do. Tainiela Napa. Tain Lamb, I think, with the culprits here, Ken. Kelson boys have responded very well, I feel, after they got the try scored against them. They, they've basically been attacking non-stop uh, since they were scored against. So, good comeback from them, but they just need to make things stick now. They're getting themselves in, on the field in the right places, but they just need to finish the moves. I think they're still settling down, aren't they? It's a, it's, there's not much fluidity there yet. No, it's a little bit stop-start, I think it's fair to say, John. Mm. Both these teams playing for $500 voucher from our very kind sponsors, Under Armour, not to be confused with Under Armour, as I got caught on last week. I did said Under Armour instead of Under Armour, so I apologise for that. They're in a board meeting, Kelston. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mount they Albert are. Grammar are waiting. Yeah. There they are there. They're in a committee meeting. Yeah. Oh, well. New Zealand's public service answered everything. <laughs> Former committee have a meeting. <laughs> so we'll see what it will come to as Kumazaki with the throw. Well, it's certainly not going to Viani. He's uh, crouched down at the front. Probably so that the hooker can see the target through the 125 kg frame, this big man, but he gets in there and lends his weight now, helping to drive inside the 22. So Kelston on attack. What can they do this time with the ball? It's up to Taylor Adams to set things going. Beats that first one, nice offload. The replacement, man. oh, this is a lovely setup for Kelston, and Vicinia finishes it off. The committee meeting was worth holding. <laughs> Well, they needed to come up with something after holding the game up for a month while they had their meeting. And this kid, Lolangi of his senior, 92 kilograms, six foot three. And he can run the football. Taylor Adams with a good show of skill. Dummy dummy on the inside, offload in the tackle. And a nice flat ball. And then this tip on from Tumusa was too good. And it's a great finish. Yeah, Taylor Adams took a lot of defenders out, didn't he? With that sort of almost two dummies here he took about three or four defenders out and then it was just a quick shuffle and they moved the ball wide very quickly and Vicinia put himself into space he got outside the defender 
Nico, Damon Nico was the defender. He put himself outside and ran in on the corner. So nice positioning, nice passing of the ball through the hands, a nice deception. Bearing in mind that two plays ago, this kid, Vicenia, he was the one that put in the 55-metre touch finder from inside their own half that gave them that field position. Then the committee meeting, now the try. Now the kick, which is not going to make it. It's 5-all. This is as tight as what we anticipated. An early try to Lamb for Mags after 10 minutes. A response now by Vicinia after 19 minutes. And it's Mags defending the Moeska Cup. And Kelston Boys High School level at five points all. So Kelston received the ball from the kickoff. This is 11 Auckland titles. Kelston up against 20 Auckland titles, Mount Albert. So two colleges that are used to being there on finals day, going at it again, and the kick. Well, Kelston opting to let it go out so they get to throw in the line out. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I, it almost looked like a little bit of lack of communication <laughs> yes. there, but yeah, they get the chance to throw it in, and their line out, uh, as we saw from the last try that they scored, working reasonably well, Ken, so um, they're backing themselves, and that's what it's all about. Uh, Kumazaki. Again, it's a six-man line-out, so they've dropped a couple out. Uh, Kumazaki is beaten in the air by Tane Lamb, the try scorer. So this will give Mount Albert Grandma field position. Scrum on the left-hand side of the park and an opportunity to put a play on. And the Balizé look like the target. And you can see him putting his uh, outside hand up, Ken, so that would indicate the ball was going well away from the mark. Normally you need to put your inside arm here, the outside arm up. A good indicator that it wasn't straight. And we'll see what they come up with from here. Mount Albert Grammar. So Manahira holds. McAllister Point gives a short ball for Devery. It's the 22 metre line. They go the right side again. Short for Kitasoma. On the outside of his marker, strong run from Kenesoma, 10 metres out. So Hala Holo playing halfback and Sean Devine loses the ball. So the first couple of phases were good. Yes, quite threatening. They look well organised, good structure as we see a little bit of a standoff between a couple of players. It's eventually Devine who takes it up and loses the ball in three tackles. Seven on seven. Yeah, Chris Neary though doing a very good job defens defensively. He targeted the ball and he knocked it loose. So that's some good touches from the Calston boys open side flank. have been very effective defensive wise so far in this match. Defensive scrum then. Crouch. Full, full call. Touch. Nobody really standing deep to receive it. It's going to be picked up in a dangerous play. One-handed running by Tokongio. Now the ball goes back. And the clearance is made. Uh, Vicinia looks a talented player at fullback there. Uh, looks wants to be a teacher when he gets out of college. And he will be a good teacher, I think, Mark Watson. Yeah, well, just getting comment from both coaches 20 minutes into this first half. Calston Boys High School, their coaching staff, just want to see the basic handling errors removed from the play. Talking to Mount Albert Grammar Coach Charlie McAllister, he's actually happy with the way Mount Albert are playing. He's just giving all the credit to Calston for coming here and playing some great rugby. Five all the score. Oh, good contesting at line-out time by Calston now. Fuka Fuka. So now Vianney, G puts himself about the park, the big tight head prop, very dominant with the ball, very strong at scrum time. Now an attacking kick. Kinesoma. Damon Nico. Another player can run the football. Now the senior on the kick return. Again opting to conservatively get some field position as opposed to running. Forcing Mount Elbert Grammar to kick the ball out so Kelson will get the throw at the line out. He's showing a bit of talent from the back, the number 15, Vicinia. He covers the ground so quickly, three or four paces, but always looking and spotted that little bit of a gap. That's where he nudged the ball and then followed up quickly. He wasn't very popular, John, as he came through chasing his kick. 
he pushed uh, Lewis Devery out of the way. So there's a little bit of banter going off yeah. the ball there. <laughs> he wasn't going to let anyone get in the way of him as he was chasing his kick. He thought it was a good kick and deserved that uh, he'd get it back. Yeah, a bit of spite. Uh, that's ball. good. Nice Isn't to see a bit of feeling. Isn't that great? <laughs> that's what it's about. So, as Tanarumanga said, we're not playing tiddlywinks. Yeah. Uh, Kumazaki was looking for Manukia. They win the line out, but it's untidy. So they're forced to go back before they can go forward. Then they do well, do they? No, nah, they've lost the ball. So Mount Albert Grammar. With a position they weren't expecting, McAllister Poy. Vicenia in no hurry to go back and take it on the full. Adams, the captain, goes behind McAllister Poy. And that is a very good kick. Very good kick. And we're just getting an indication. Yes, stood on the touchline, McAllister Poy. So Kelston have an attacking line out on the right hand side of the park. And an opportunity for them to do something special. And I like the touch from Taylor Adams as he ran past. McAllister Poy, too. Yeah, you can see it there. He had his feet on the touchline as he touched the ball. But Taylor Adams, as he went back, running past McAllister Poy, almost put his hand up to give him a little pat on the back of the head. Saying, hey, mate, that wasn't a bad kick, man, was it? Love it. Dave Goldfinch, the touch judge over there, getting plenty of advice as Kelston attack from that line out. That's the goal line you can see. Quick ball coming. Fuka Fuka, does he want it? Or is he letting the big boys carry on with it? The big boys carry on. Well, it's within being inch perfect. They can't get much closer. Oh, this is great stuff from the Kelston boys forward pack. They are very effective on the pick and go, and they're working as a pack. And Mount Albert, very lucky to keep them out. So what's the choice now from Kelston boys? I think this is a good choice, Ken. Their line-outs looked all right, but that last one was good. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Also, they've stolen a couple as well, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, they have. They've been very effective. Come down, Blue. They're just taking it to the Mount Albert forwards a little bit, Ken. They really uh, they get their body position down nice and low. They're getting support on the ball with their pick and goes. And above all things, they're working as a unit, which is critical. 8-3, yeah. eight, eight, the line-out stat in favour of Kelston. Make that 9-3. Not straight. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Kumasaki would be a little bit disappointed with himself there. Yes, a pat on the head from his mate. Never mind, mate. Keep going. Let's have a look at it again in the replay. Uh, oh, well. Disappointing. Now, now but Grammar players are smiling. There he is, Fred Stewart. He's not too disappointed about it all. He knows the team gets a chance to get off the hook. Yeah, you're not balanced, okay? You must hold your own way. Yep. So you're talking to the players of you, John McBeth. Not balanced. <laughs> you're probably talking about me. That, that, that applies <laughs> That's right, yeah. men mentally and physically. <laughs> hey, this is going to be a good game, guys. And Palmerston North, Touch. Curtain Razor, Palmy Four. Boys against Bingo. Building Egg. Looking forward to that one. We've got lots of stuff coming up here on College Rugby, as you can see. Plenty of exciting games. Not out. The attack started by Vicenia, the try scorer, quickly covering the ground. He has Adams with him, moving it out to the replacement, the big Fijian Nandratolo. He's quickly into support. They're over the touchline again. But Kelston are having the better of the latter stages of this match so far. Number 22 is Luque. Nandrua Tolo, Fijian under 18 representative. He came in for Matt Vaenga. They've lost possession here, or have they? No, nope, scrum for the men in red. There's a bit of sledging going on out there, guys. There's a lot of talk, a lot of banter off the ball. That's just an indication of how much this means to both teams. And I think both would be disappointed at the errors. There's been a few handling errors unforced errors that can put your team under all sorts of pressure so i'm sure as they go into half time in five minutes time both coaches will be aware of those mistakes creeping in and will be wanting to sort them out rob parks uh, telling danny pahulu the loose head prop for kelston to button it as they get ready for the next scrum attacking scrum kelston yeah well they're eight and three this is the team that was second at the end of the regular season last year up against the defending champions 
So we are in effect looking at number one and number two in Auckland Secondary School Rugby in 2010, going at it in 2011 early in the season. So we would expect that Kelston would come with their game face on and be ready and they're not be and have no intention of taking a backward step. So it's good to see the boys are up for the contest. Five minutes to go. Great field position. Alex Hodgman, the tight head for Mount Albert, doing a very, very good job at scrum time here. See how the scrum's screwing around? Just putting a lot of pressure on there. But they've cleared a Calston. Adams to the line. It's short ball for a Witimi Paraki. Now they've got great field position right in front of the Mount Albert post. They just need to recycle the ball. And it's a pick and go for Viani. So pressure now on Mount Albert Grammar as they inch their way forward through Dukun Gyo. A close quarter, unarmed combat from Kelston. Again, they're sticking with what works at three meters out. Slow and patient. And they go again. And very attractive. Not great to look at, but it can be effective. And the try scored. Very patient. Very disciplined. And Danny Pahulu. The front row with the big smiles. And there's effort after effort. In that contribution from the big men of Kelston. The shoulder to the wheel. Pick and go, and really putting it on the Mount Albert defenders. And here he comes. You see Danny Pahulu coming in the back here. He picks it there. He's got good body position. And basically, he's taken on, on three Mount Albert defenders on his own through good body position. One defender, two defender, three defenders. He's here on his own and smashes over. That is great strength from the front front oh, row forward. I agree. Brilliant. I thought they would have had to go again. I didn't think he would be able to get, it, get there from that situation because the defense from uh, Mount Albert Grammar have been pretty good. Difficult to defend against, of course. Kick now from Taylor Adams. Well, Viani and Pahulu, the big ball carriers, and Taylor Adams, we've already seen from him in the beaten side against the Kings. What a talented player he is, Taylor Adams, and confidently standing at first receiver and just sending his big men into the heart of the Mount Albert defense, and what a great result. Yeah, well, amazing turnaround from Calston Boys High School since we saw them against Kings two weeks ago, committing a lot more players to the ruck and more, and keeping a lot tighter in and around the fringes. And at the moment, Man Grammar looks somewhat shell shocked. Well, if we go back to the start of that, they'd almost uh, talk about Taylor Adams. He'd almost put uh, Utemai Paraki in for a try under the posts. As Mount Albert Grammar now, can they come back, bounce back from this? A 12 to five deficit. A couple oh. of minutes to go until the break. Early they days. haven't had much possession. Early days yet, boys. This is a quality team, this Mount Albert Grammar side. Uh, McAllister Poy again oh, sends the ball out long and then a little tip on for Cameron Rutherford. So really stretching the Kelson defence across the park. Mount Albert, 24 metres out. A little bit of hustle coming from the Kelston forwards. The force of scrum by the tremendous contesting. Yes, well, by the Kelston boys. Yes, that's right, Ken. Kelston boys committing the numbers there. Mount Albert thought they had the ball won, so they had their forward standing out to get, take the next phase, and it almost cost them. I think they're a little bit lucky to get away with that, to be honest. Great commitment from Kelston boys. Really blowing in and hard over the ball, and I've been impressed with their body position. It's low, and it's effective because they're working together as a unit. I love the chat. There's just chat all across the field. And communication is such a skill in rugby that uh, can never be underestimated. Pele for Fonga Kali. The halfback for Mount Albert Grammar with the football. Once he was in the Blues under 18s team last year in the representative side. And he is a quality kid with good, great talent. Kali, he can run the football. He's got a good kicking game. He's tough in defense. And, sorry, Ken, I noticed a lot of these young men because they play rep rugby together before the game, you know, talking to each other. So a lot of friends, even though they're on opposite teams today as well. McAllister Poy to the line, shows the ball on the inside. Two runners, and Devery breaks the line of the Kelson defence. And again, pressure being brought to bear on Mount Albert's ball, Cowley. 
McAllister Poya cut out ball for Kirasoma. Gets away from Wetimi Paraki and then runs at him again. Now the pick and go from Hala Holo. Couple of tackles. Three back. Off your feet. Six. Six. Not supporting his weight. They're up to over the 35 minute mark now. So they may just take a shot if they've been told how much time they've got. That's what we need to talk about. Where you go? No, don't need them right now. Thanks. What's your option? Stand up. Shot at goal. Shot at goal, says the first five, Jared McAllister Poy. I was just have a look at that last move and there's no doubt the two first fives are running things exceptionally well we watch here McAllister Poy again the sort of two dummies and on the run there off his shoulder was Louis Devery but look at the breakdown how physical Kelston are that's even the second five eight Kirby Tavita doing as all players now must do whether they're backs or forward but the, the work of a good loose forward and uh, now McAllister Poy will have this chance to go I was just thinking of a guy who'll be watching this former All Black uh, from Mount Albert Grammar, Mick Bremner. They called him the Olympic All Black because he only played for the All Blacks every four years. And uh, he'll be watching with interest to see how his old team goes. Can they close the gap? It doesn't look like it. They haven't. And it's forced down and that will be the break. And at half time in this Moaska Cup defence from Mags, Mount Albert Grammar, they trail Calston Boys High